In this video, I'm going to use Unity and Bolt Visual Scripting to show how we can set up an item tooltip that displays information about our items when we scroll over them in our inventory. Let's begin. Shall we play a game? This is actually part 11 of my complete inventory series, and in order to complete this part of the tutorial, you need to have first completed the previous tutorials in order. If this is the first video in the series that you're seeing, simply click the card in the top right to return to the start. If you're the type of person who prefers a written tutorial to a video format, I've posted a link on my Patreon page that will give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete each of these steps, which is free for everyone to use. If you enjoyed these tutorials and would like to help support my channel, be sure to choose your level of support on my Patreon page while you're there. As I stated in the showcase video, if you want the system but don't really care about building it, as my way of saying thank you to my top supporters, I've made the project files downloadable. Not only is my complete inventory system included to these supporters, but my complete 2D player controller as well, which by the way, includes a simple enemy AI. With that out of the way, let's get started with this build. For this step in the tutorial, we are going to have to create several new UI game objects as well as make a new flow macro and modify an existing flow macro that we've already created for our item game object. Um, we're also going to need to make use of the tooltip sprite image that we already imported for the split UI tutorial. Um, you can click the card in the top right to be taken back to that if you need help with that. Um, we are also going to need a coin image. Let me see if I can drag one of these into the screen here. This is essentially what this looks like. We are going to be making use of this in our split UI uh, panel. Um, if you're interested in getting that coin game object, you can actually go to the online tutorial blog that I have posted for this video under the uh, item tooltip, the number 11 video. You can go down here under getting started and then you can just click download and you'll be taken to an image of that coin. Just right click and save that image as coin. Once you get that imported into your Unity game, just drop that under the sprites folder. I have mine sitting right here as coin. Next thing we need to do is we need to set up a tooltip canvas and I've already actually taken the liberty of setting that up but the way I did that is I right click went to UI and clicked on canvas I renamed that game object tooltip canvas uh, this is not going to need a tag but we are going to have to set up some other features here we want the sort order to be four on this so that it sits above everything else and we also need to set the scale with screen size to a 16.9 so 1920 by 1080 the next thing we're going to do is we're going to right click that game object and we are going to create an empty and I'm just going to go ahead and drop this down and you should see this the tooltip anchor is what we're going to call that game object. Um, essentially what this is going to be doing is housing all of our tooltip game objects so that uh, we can turn those items on and off. Um, as you see here I have them all turned off but also it allows us to set this to 000. zero, zero. Uh, notice that I put a width of 10 and a height of 10 on that just to ensure that this is the size that I'd like for it to be. So you might have to play around with these values a little bit. But um, this is essentially all there is to this game object. Make sure that you go ahead and add a tag called tooltip overlay because we are going to be referencing that in our code with a tag. The next thing you're going to need to do is right click and create a UI image that will sit underneath that and that is actually going to be our tooltip. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and show you the finished product here. We are actually going to be building this a little at a time. So let me uh, move over here. There we go. That's a little better. All right, so going to our tooltip game object, the first thing that we need to do with this is give it the tooltip tag. Um, and we are also going to set the anchor preset on this one to a stretch. And you should notice that your rec transform left, top, right, and bottom are now what is going to display instead of the X and Y and, and where it's setting on those, those, um, that axis. We are actually going to set the left to 4, the top to three, negative 370, the right to negative 370, and the uh, bottom to 4 as well. And what this is doing is this is stretching this game object in those parameters. We are also going to set the source image on this one to the tooltip uh, sprite that we actually have here. We are going to take the color of the alpha down to 200 so that it's semi-transparent. You can kind of see through it. Uh, we are also going to have to uncheck the ray recast target right here to ensure that this is not trying to uh, stand in front of everything. In other words, we should be able to click through this. Now, it shouldn't be in the way of our mouse cursor, but we're just checking that box to ensure that nothing uh, ever happens with this game object that we can't click on uh, another item. 
Also, we set that image type to slice, and you should notice that um, is if you don't have that, it's going to make it up. I'm sorry, the wrong thing here. If you set it to simple, it's going to be big and fat around the edge. We actually want that to be set to sliced. Under our tooltip game object, we are going to right click and create a new UI text, Text Mesh Pro. Um, then we're going to rename that, guy, that game object item name. And um, you'll notice here that I have a little bit of room in my item name. Uh, and I also used a new font um, here that's just called Peak CP. You can get that from the font if you're interested in that. You can actually go to uh, that online tutorial blog that I was talking about. Let's see if I can pull that over for you. Um, if you go to this online tutorial blog, you'll actually get a link to that particular uh, font. You don't have to use this. You can use whatever you want. Uh, you get that right there. So you can grab that from the font here. Click on that. should open up the font. should take you to the font. And essentially what we're doing is we are setting that up in our uh, window, Text Mesh Pro, Font Asset Creator, and we just drop that peak CP right there and save it in our fonts folder so that we can drag this game object right here into that panel. So um, under item name, I have changed the font there. Um, the text here, does, it doesn't really matter what the text says. But you want to just test out the text to ensure that something is going to fit. So for example, the first time I built this, I had a greater health potion. And my font was way too big because uh, it would actually go past the uh, limit here and it would just kick it down. So you need to make sure, uh, maybe get the lo longest game item that you have and just test out what this is actually going to say right here. Um, so you, you just put that in there and we are actually going to um, set the Y on that to, uh, I have it set to a 140. You can reposition these things however you like. I have found that a 140 seems to work best for me because I like it up here on the top uh, top left. You get the item description. Uh, let, me, let me just check these to make sure. I've got the font size set to 60 and the vortex color set to yellow. Um, so um, I right click this tooltip again and I created another TextMesh Pro game object and I named that description. Now uh, as I keep going down this list I don't want to fail to mention that it is very very important that you put these game objects in the item uh, item hierarchy I guess uh, the order that I actually have it here. So item name, description, gold amount, sell price text, and our gold coin that we'll set up in just a second. The um, item description, I have pretty much just typed in some words here. Again, you need to make sure that it fits in your tooltip. Um, the width I set to 330, the height to 200, and I just used the standard Liberation Sans SDF font there because I think it looks fine for me. Um, so uh, just make sure that, as I said, uh, like I said, you play around with those values and just make sure that, that fits in there. I would recommend that you left align this one as well as the item name needs to be left align. Excuse me. Um, and uh, just make sure that they line up. So wherever you have the uh, X position or, or the Y, you know, you need to make sure that they are the same on that just so that it looks clean and neat. Um, we also need another Text Mesh Pro game object. You can now just copy the description or duplicate that one and name it gold amount um, these are the settings that I have on that uh, X of 30 Y of a negative 150 um, and again you just move it wherever you want it on your UI I have my text set to 1 here and again it's not gonna matter what you have in the text because it will change depending on which game object that we're scrolling over we're gonna set that up in our code I have my font says set to 30 and I'm just using a Liberation Sans here. The last thing here, this is one game object that will never change, as well as the gold coin, which is why I have them at the bottom of the list here under that, childed in that order. Uh, just have it named Cell Price. It's a uh, font size of 30. These are my X and Y and my width and height on that. And lastly, I have a gold coin setup. So we are actually going to right click the tooltip and go to an image here. So the rest of these are Text Mesh Pro game objects. This should come up as an image, and I set the source image to a coin here. Um, I'm, I did one more thing. I made sure the rate cast target is clicked off of that for some reason. If you ever tried to move, it shouldn't ever be in the way, but I'm just going ahead and making sure that that is out of the way. And I set these parameters on that coin just to see if I could get it to fit the way that I wanted it. I have a width of 30 and a height of 30 so that it actually sits in there and looks pretty nice. 
Once you get this tooltip the way that you want it, you can now um, go to your tooltip game object and just disable it by clicking this little check mark right here. We are actually done with that game object. We will now need to go into our macros folder under our inventory item folder and uh, create a new flow macro and call it tooltip. And this is the overview for this. I will zoom in on this so that you can get a better idea. This is just the overview, so you might need to pause the video and take a middle note there. This is where this is actually going to be set up. So we have an input coming in and we have defined a control input as on and off. And this is because we want to control when this tooltip comes on and what happens when it goes off and when it goes off. So uh, assuming that we are scrolling over the game object and we want it to turn on, we will run a branch here, uh, run that into a branch and check and see if our split UI panel is actually up. So we get the variable of the split UI, the object variable, and check if it is true on the split UI game object that we find the tag. We don't want this to display when we have that split UI up. That's the only thing we want to show when we split our items. So uh, we're going to run that from false to set the game object to active. Now notice we take it from the child of the tooltip overlay. So the child of the tooltip overlay is this tooltip game object. So we have that one set as a tooltip overlay and this is the child for that game object. Um, it, when we turn it off, we're doing pretty much the opposite. We're just turning that game object active to false, and we are running those strings into our get child of our finally tag tooltip overlay. So when we set it on, we are going to need to now set the text for those game objects. I'm going to kind of leave it right here so that you can see that each one of these child objects needs to come into this game object right here. So. Uh, this one, this one, and this one all come from here. So what we're doing when we set it active is we are getting the first child of child. So now we are into the first child of the child. Remember I told you it's very important that you make sure that these game objects are set up in this order. That's why, because we're calling that in our code. The first game object in our child, which will be our item name, we are setting the text on the text mesh pro UGUI to whatever is displayed in the item name game object of the item in our slot list. When we set up our items, we set up these things as well. So we have the item name, the description, and the cost. These are the three things that we are referencing in um, the tooltip. So um, as we, let me go back to that tooltip here. Okay, so when we get our item name, uh, object variable, we're setting the text in that game object to the text of the uh, TextMesh Pro UG, UG UI. So that will display. Um, so we're getting the first game object, that is our item name. The second one is the description, which we have running into this unit right here, and that child is going into that same good child. And the last one is our cost. Um, now, we are doing something a little bit different with the cost, and the reason why is because we want to reflect how much the stack is worth, not the individual item. So, for example, if I had a gold bar that was worth, uh, I don't know, 100 gold, and I had three of those items, then I want to take the cost, I want to multiply it how, by how many items are actually in that slot list, and I want to send that integer to string so that it reflects in the item amount what that whole stack is actually worth. So the last thing that we're doing here is just, uh, this is just a feature, you don't have to have this, but basically what I'm doing is I'm getting the, uh, the Y of the mouse position, um, and I'm, I'm changing the uh, rec transform set position by finding the tooltip overlay and moving that up and down. Um, and I'm just subtracting some variables from, or some a value from the Y and a little bit from the X. That's actually adding some to the X because the subtract minus 30 um, is actually add 30. So what this is doing is whenever we scroll over a game object, I didn't want it to be able to uh, to show up here, it's like to start right here and then go up out of the screen where you can't read it. And so what that's doing is if the Y is greater than 160, and you might have to play around with these values, this is just what I found worked for me, that when you scroll over it up here, it will actually move it down a little bit, and when you scroll over it down here, it will reflect in a regular way. So that is what these units are doing. Again, you don't have to have that. I just thought that was a nice feature for myself. So. That is actually 
the tooltip macro. Now where we need to set this up is actually on our item game object. So I'm gonna click on just one of these items here and this is actually where we are going to set that super unit. So we set the tooltip there, we run an on pointer enter into the on and an on pointer exit into the off. Uh, so whenever we enter the game object, when we scroll over it's saying hey on, mount, uh, on pointer enter and it's going to turn it on assuming there is no split UI up and when we leave that game object, it should now turn it off. Now there's actually one more thing that we need to change and I believe it is in our split item UI. So we are actually gonna add this unit right here to this macro. So we're just going to break the flow right here and uh, we are going to run that branch that is checking if the slot list items are greater than one because we can't split the game object unless it's more than one. Remember that? Well, we're actually going to run that true into the set active uh, uh, variable here, this uh, unit, that we are turning that to false. We are getting the tooltip overlay, we're getting child of that game object, and we're setting it off. So that's just basically setting our tooltip off. Uh, and we don't want that open whenever we are trying to split a game object because that could cause some problems. So that is essentially it. You should now be set up and ready to go. Again, make sure that your tooltip is disabled when you start your game. You can just minimize each one of these things. And now when we start up our game, we should see that each one of these game objects, as we pick them up in our inventory, that we should get the right amount of information and it should set so the title is berry, the description is this looks juicy and delicious. Notice the sell price is four, but whenever I split and go down to one game object, so one, two, three. So it is reflecting the correct amount. Um, each one of these game objects now should give you the correct information that we set up in the game objects themselves. Okay, you should now have an item tooltip that is set up and ready to use that you are now able to display the right information about your items. And believe it or not, we're almost done with this bad boy. But maybe you've noticed that when you fill up your inventory with items, even though we have an item cap, we still pick up items. So how can we get a full inventory and stop picking up items? Well, that's what we're going to cover in the next tutorial. I hope this video was helpful for you and that you are now able to get valuable information about your items. I'm looking forward to the next tutorial, but for now, just let me say thanks for joining me. My name is Megahertz, and I'm out.